Hello everybody. Today I'm building a little bow saw I designed a little while ago and decided I will only be using hand tools. However, if you want to use that sweet, sweet electricity, don't hold back. The shop drawings and this two scale PDF printout are available in the description. As always, they'll be free for the first five days to give my subscribers a little bonus and then available for a few bucks, which goes to supporting the channel. I cut the pieces to rough length to make the planing a little bit easier. I used this small Japanese plane I received as a Christmas gift to bring the pieces to about 3 quarters of an inch in thickness. This step can be done with a jointer and planer if you have access to one. I just used a scrap piece of walnut I had in the shop, which is awesome because walnut will make a dark and sexy handsaw. Any wood can be used really, but I suggest staying away from construction grade softwood as it won't produce a very refined product. I cut the parts out of the PDF and glued them directly onto the wood. I drilled the holes for the interior cutouts with an old timey hand drill. This step can also be done with a drill press or an electric drill or any invention from the last 50 to 60 years. Cutting these pieces out proved to be tedious with a coping saw. A jigsaw or a scroll saw would make quick work of this step. I cleaned up the inside of the cuts with a chisel. Cutting the general outline of the side pieces, I used my pull saw again, and then the plane from earlier to bring it closer to the line and smooth the edge. With all the pieces cut out, it was time to begin working on the joint that holds the cross support in place. I used my marking gauge to line up my tenon cuts, however, a pencil and straight edge would work just as well. To mark the mortise on the side pieces, I set my marking gauge to the width of the tenon to transfer the dimension. This can also be done with a pencil and straight edge, or simply by tracing the tenon onto the side pieces. I removed the bulk of the mortise with a hand drill, and cleaned it out with a mallet and chisel. You want this joint to have a tight fit, but not so tight it loses its ability to rotate. This rotation is what allows the saw to tighten once it's complete. I used my plane again to add a taper to the tightening piece. The bulky profile did not suit the saw well. It looks much better with the taper. I had the pleasure and satisfaction of unwrapping and using a brand new gouge to notch the cross support so the tightening piece had somewhere to rest. I marked and cut the slots for the saw blade. I bought a blade for a portable bandsaw, which gave me about three lengths for the size of saw I'm making. It turned out to be about $10. I decided on a fine tooth saw blade, but other blades will fit just fine if I need to switch. I drilled the holes to hold the saw blades in place and then matched that hole onto the blade itself. To keep the blade in this slot, I used Chicago screws so it wouldn't tear at the wood. The blade is now in place, but it is not tight enough to use. I recommend using string with minimal stretchability and cutting it slightly larger than the needed length. The blade on this saw is tightened by twisting the top piece and resting it against the middle support. This is why your joints can't be too tight. Before applying a finish to this baby, I had to try it out. I cut a quick dovetail corner and deemed it worthy of a sanding and a coat of Danish oil to finish.
If you enjoyed the video, please consider purchasing the plans to build it yourself or subscribing to see future builds like this one.